God is so good. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. We are blessed and privileged today. One of the best things that's come out of this church in the past year, year and a half, two years, has been the launching of and continuing filming and presentation of Life with Gwen and Joe, right? That's the kind of celebrity couple I wanna watch, I wanna follow. Forget all this nonsense out here, let's follow that example. And without any further delay, will you please welcome and praise God appropriately for Gwen and Joe, Laura. about kids around the world and what they're doing and how they're acting and you, you, you just can't have what's going on here when there are characteristics of Christ missing. And this camp is the characteristics of Christ. And this week, uh, this we were just looking at it, Joe and I right. were just looking and reviewing y'all's homework for this week and uh, what we're studying. Right, uh, so, so um, in the journal for this week, uh, week one, it says, uh, we're working on things like God is loving, God's, God loves gentleness, God is not self-seeking, God is not easily angered, and God loves forgiveness. That's right. God uh -huh. and Christ, His Son, all those characteristics are, are theirs. And so, we, you, can you imagine a world where everything was the opposite? And that's going to be where God is separating out. He's continually dividing off and pruning. It says in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, it talks about how God is the gardener and he prunes, you know, the, the dead branches off. And the, those that are dead are not connected to the vine of these characteristics. And so they're going to wind up having characteristics that are the opposite of Jesus Christ and God the Father. So, hey, there's one verse I would love for you to, okay. to start with. Luke 6. Okay, it says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Okay, think about that. It's like an incredible verse, but do not judge do not, you know, condemn and forgive. Don't condemn. I mean, you know, that would just mean you've given up on somebody or you, you know, you, you think that they are no good. They're, they're not good enough to make it to heaven. So you're out judging and condemning. Who wants to be around that? Obviously God doesn't, or he wouldn't be weeding that characteristic out of heaven. Can I bring up an instance? Yes. Charles Grantham, Hannah, is, is kind of like my hero. I, I, love, I love this little guy. We were in Knoxville one weekend. We were at the water park and there was, a, there was a boy who was being very mean to Charles and he was saying some very, very nasty things to Charles. And without being coached by an adult, I watched Charles handle the situation like a man. And he did not get angry. He did not say anything nasty back to this little boy. He, he, he took what this boy was saying to him, which was not nice, and he handled it in a very godly way. And I learned from him. I thought, man, if, if, if I can just act like Charles, then I, I think that my, my reactions to things would be very pleasing to God. I'm so proud of you, Charles. We are proud of Charles Green. I didn't even know you were going to bring up Charles Grantham. So we don't we don't plan these things out. We, we, we just go for it. Well, yesterday, Charles got, uh, Charles Grantham got a reward. And what had happened was he couldn't find his lunch. And he went and prayed to God first and before he went to the counselors. And because of that, they uh, gave him the spirit award for his tribe. And I, I would just say that you know, in this instance of watching him overcome evil with good, what I notice about him and, and his lack of anger toward anyone, no matter what someone says, he flips it and thinks the best of what they're saying. He loves so much that he just wants peace 
between everybody. So you just, you don't, you don't see Charles, you know, getting angry and, and upset at people or retaliating. You just don't see it. And so we have great expectations for Charles, but also all of you all, all of you, you know, because I know that when you get this close and this tight, and you're waiting in line, or somebody, uh, what's the game they're playing now? What's the new game out there Is where it? you hit the ball? Gaga. Gaga ball. Cause see, I, right. I would have called it gotcha ball, but <laughs> it's, you know, gotcha. They got me playing gaga ball yesterday, yeah. and I got in there, I lasted like five seconds. And I was right. Like, well, you ha you've got quite a bit of space between the foot and your knee, so that's just not fair. <laughs> you know, gaga ball, and and everybody is, you know, you're having to get out, and some people could get angry from that instead of understanding that these scriptures are basically saying that, that Joe's got here, they're saying, if you don't forgive, then you are not going to make it. I mean, it is a heaven, it's literally something that you have to have to enter the heavens, so. Uh, there's another scripture here, it's, it's beautiful, it's simple, but so meaningful. Ephesians 4, 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgives you. Wow. So. I love that. Yeah, should I keep going, Garland? I love it. All right, how about Matthew 6, 14? For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So there you go. Very reciprocal. I yeah. mean, who wants to not be forgiven? I mean, you'd have to be very prideful to think you don't have something to forgive. <laughs> I need forgiveness. And so, isn't there one about uh, how many times you have to forgive, seven times seven? Yes. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It's all over the Bible. These scriptures are, they're amazing. There's the spirit of anger that it talks about. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Uh, so it's just saying be slow to anger. And um, in Ephesians 4.31 it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice, which is every form of anger. And hate. Mm -hmm. Right. Ephesians 4.26-27, in your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. It's interesting, when the sun goes down, we go to sleep. If we take that anger into our, into our sleep, it kind of says that the devil might get a foothold. And I think that's very profound. Ah, uh, and real, yeah. and real. He says, don't do that. It's like a hot potato, don't touch it, don't touch it. And if you find yourself being irritated, angry, not gentle, and then next week's about being boastful, bragging, all those things that are just not Jesus Christ or God. It's something that we've got to really, we've got to really, really work on, and we can by flipping it. Now, if you focus on your own sins, if you feel angry and you, you feel it coming on, but you start, if you kept a list, you know, nearby in your workbook, somewhere that you could get to of the things that you know you need to work on and you read that list, you will not be judgmental. The main thing to do in life is to look inward at your own sins so that you can turn out to be that forgiving, long-suffering, overcoming evil with good, flipping it all so that there's no anger, no rage, no malice, no hate, no judgmental, no condemnation, and full of forgiveness. So to have all that, you've got to see yourself as you really are. Beautiful. You know, um, one thing I was to give everybody hope as we kind of get toward the end of this is a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope because this is what I know about God. And I've lived a long time now 
And I'm, I'm grateful for that because what I know absolutely calms me totally down. Okay, it talks about in Romans 12, overcome evil with good, and that it's, God says, do not take revenge. It is mine to avenge. Leave room for God's wrath. In other words, God hates it so bad when somebody's mean to you, He wants His wrath to come on them, and His wrath is worse than your wrath. And he can really wow. put his, yeah, he'll really, he'll really put them in the place. So if you leave room for his wrath, then they're really gonna get in trouble. Well, what was interesting to finish up the Charles Grantham story, we were at this water park and he was standing in line with this little mean boy and the kid just was insulting him in every mm. way. And they were gonna go down this artificial surf you're, you know when the water's rushing up and you get on the boogie board and you can kind of skim across the water? Right. Now. Well, that little boy, I don't think he was on, but a couple of seconds was off. Charles Grantham tore it up. And he, <laughs> he rode that boogie board and stayed on there longer than that guy. <laughs> I and remember I that. I knew that was God. I knew it was God vindicating him. And he, God hates, he just hates people being mean to people. He hates it. One, one thing that I also feel like saying is is that when when you love somebody who's being mean to you that's where your spirit and it's God says that you're the light of the world right we're, we're the light of the world when we when we incorporate Christ-like qualities into our behavior and oftentimes if somebody's that might be your best friend that that person who's insulting you or being mean if you're if you show kindness to them that person because of your graciousness and and and, and the way you handle it that person's heart may soften just because of the way you handled it. That person may end up being your best friend because you showed kindness to them when they were showing meanness to you. And I think that's how sometimes we win people over. And God says in the Bible that you're the light of the world, right? Right. And so that's how you show your light, by showing kindness in the face of, of a mean-spirited person. <sighs> Beautiful. That's how, it's, a, it's something how the Holy Spirit gets in there and just goes to work. And, and so that person may end up being a good buddy, you know? That's awesome. Like, you're my buddy. This guy's awesome. So. It's up to 77 times. I'll just I, read the first part of it. Well, before you read it, I was going to let you know that you were at 76. Sorry about that. I mean, it's getting thin here. We're skating on thin ice, if you know what I'm talking about. I got one more chance. <laughs> the pressure's I'm just on. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.